Hello everyone, my name is Lenny. It's the Holy Week and today is Thursday. It's the day before Jesus' crucifixion and also known as the Last Supper. What I want us to do today is to talk about what happened that night with him and his disciples, put some principles and apply them to our lives today. In fact, a lot of our traditions that we have today stem from what happened that night. And what I want to do is to talk about the importance of fellowship in the body. And we get that from the time that he spent with them when he's eating with them. And what we're about to get into happens even just before he eats. Now, before I get started, I did want to talk about what was happening, a little bit of a background. Um, during that time, um, the Jewish traditions and the customs were that uh, they wore sandals most of the time. And sandals exposed them to a lot of things, dirt, mud, water, anything you could think of, poop they'd probably stepped on it. So they were pretty funky. And during that time, it was also Passover. So when you would enter into a room or enter into a building, um, you either had a servant there that was washing your feet or there was a ba uh, basin there and you could dip your feet in and clean them. Now, during the Passover, that wasn't happening. There wasn't any volunteers and uh, there was no one in the upper room no one they were with Jesus when he was about to eat with them. So Jesus knew this. Um, it was Jesus's plan. He was doing this on purpose. So I kind of want to give you a little bit of a background and, and, and so that you can better understand what's happening. So the very first tradition that we see happening here is found in the book of John, uh, chapter 13, verses 1 through 5. And I'm going to be reading from that. Now, as we talk about fellowshipping in the body, I want us to understand the importance of what these three principles are going to be um, and the first one we, we see here and it starts off like this before the Passover celebration Jesus knew that his hour had come to leave the world and return to his father he had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth and now he loved them to the very end it was time for supper and the devil had already prompted Judas the son of Simon the Scariot to betray Jesus Jesus knew that the Father had given him authority over everything and that he had come from God and would return to God. So he got up from the table, took his robe, took off his robe, wrapped the towel around his waist, and poured water into a basin. Then he began to wash the disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that he had wrapped around him. Now, what he was trying to teach his disciples is the importance of serving one another. And that's something that we need to do in our body Christ today is to serve one another. And I know some things might not be what you're used to doing when serving your brothers and sisters. Uh, things might not look as pretty and you might be out of your comfort zone, but it's extremely important that we serve one another. And Jesus shows us a great example of a master serving his servants uh, in that manner, in that way, knowing that their feet was exposed to so many things. And it's because that doesn't matter. What matters is that we serve, uh, that we serve one another when we're in need. Uh, the second principle that we're going to be pulling from in another tradition that we apply to today in our lives is found in the book of Matthew, um, Matthew 26 to be exact. And we'll be reading four verses from there. That's going to be verses 26, 27, and 28. Three verses I meant to say, but he knew that. Now, it says, As they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it. Then he broke it into pieces and gave it to his disciples, saying, "This, Take this and eat it, for this is my body. And he took a cup of wine, gave thanks to God for it. He gave it to them and said, For each of you to drink it. For this is my blood, which confirms the covenant between God and his people. It poured out as a sacrifice to forgive the sins of many. Now, what, what we need to be doing is gathering with one another, uh, is to be around each other. Uh, this, what we see here, is what we would call communion today. And it was the breaking of the bread and the drinking of wine. The bread represented Jesus' body and the wine represented his blood that was sacrificed so that we could know God. And what we see here is the importance of gathering with one another, 
um, it's important that we be um, with our brothers and sisters, um, whether they be events, um, whether they be Facebook Live or anything else that you might uh, call a gathering uh, together of brothers and sisters. Um, and um, Jesus is trying to get them to understand uh, what was happening then and, and the importance of being united. Now, the last principle that we're going to be pooling from um, is also found in the book of Matthew, a little bit further in the same chapter. Um, and it's really interesting because this, this part here is where Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane, and they had already eaten, and um, they were there. And Jesus is asking his disciples to sit there and pray with him. Now, what was, what's really interesting about the Garden of Gethsemane is it shows uh, the difference between Jesus and Adam in the beginning, when Adam and Eve were there um, in the Garden of Eden. Adam had failed. He sinned. And Jesus obeyed God, and he conquered sin in the Garden of Gethsemane, where Adam failed in the Garden of Eden. And I found that to be very, very, very jaw-dropping, honestly, if you think about it. Um, uh, besides that, when Jesus is in the Garden of Gethsemane, I'm going to be reading, and it says this, Then Jesus went to them, I'm sorry, Jesus went with them, to the olive grove called Gethsemane and he said sit here while I go over there to pray he took Peter and Zebedee's son two sons James and John and he became anguished and distressed he told them my soul is crushed with grief to the point of death stay here and keep watch with me he went a little further and bowed his face to the ground praying my father if it is possible, let this cup of suffering be taken away from me. Yet, I want your will to be done, not mine. Then he returned to his disciples and found them asleep. He said, Peter, can't you watch with me even one hour? Keep watch and pray so that you will not give in to temptation. For the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Then Jesus left them a second time and prayed, My father, if this cup cannot be taken away, lest I drink it, your will be done. When he returned to them again, he found them sleeping, for they couldn't keep their eyes open. So he went to pray a third time, saying the same things again. And the principle that we see here is praying for one another with one another. You see, what was happening in the Garden of Gethsemane, and the anguish that Jesus was feeling was because now he was taking on the sins of the entire world on his shoulders and it weighed heavy so much so that he bled, he sweated blood. Um, and, and it was so overwhelming that he asked his, his uh, brothers, um, his disciples to pray for him, to be together and be with him. And what we need to understand today when we look at that is the importance of prayer for one another. When we see a brother that is struggling or they're going off and they're, they're trusting God with this new ministry that they're starting, it is so important to pray for them. And I'm not saying, hey, I'm going to be praying for you. I'm saying, man, I need to be praying for him. He's going to be going through some things. She's going to be challenged in so many different ways. And Lord, we need to be um uh, mindful of what is happening and what, what Satan could do and the importance of praying for them, um, praying with one another and the importance of that. You see, what happened in that night that also led to Jesus getting arrested and eventually um, the crucifixion is that we see these three, three things happening and the importance of fellowship with each other, with one another. And we must understand that uh, we need each other. We need one another and, and we need to be united. Um, we need to be serving each other, serving one another, um, even when it's out of our comfort zone, even if it's taking up our precious time uh, because we see a brother or a sister in need, we need to be serving one another. And we need to be gathering together. We need to spend time together in, in fellowship. Um, and um, we need to be praying for one another. And... Um, Praying like, like real prayer, not just uh, high and by praying for you, brother, um, 
but really taking some time out and, 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 and talking to God about what you already know is weighing heavy in your heart because you were led by the Spirit to understand what is going on in your brother or sister's life. Prayer for one another. See, we get a lot of our traditions from here. Communion, um, the washing of our feet, um, and we need to take those things seriously. And I'm asking for us as, and I'm challenging us as a body, us as brothers and sisters to, to do those things in fellowship in the body. Um, um, and that's my message for today. Thank you.